Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. In this lesson, I'm going to show you how to create a table full of stock replies or auto text that you can insert into your note fields in Microsoft Access. This works great for correspondence where you have specific replies you send often, or if you have specific text you're always copying and pasting or typing into notes fields. Yeah, I know they're called long text fields now, but I'm old school. Later on in the extended cut for members, we'll see how to insert the text right at the location of the placement of the cursor. We'll use the cell start property to see where the cursor is located. This is often desired instead of just adding the text to the end of the string. Then we'll also see how to add merge field codes like first name or credit limit or date to the auto text field so we can make whole letters that we can then add to the correspondence field with one click. Today's question comes from Leroy in Alpharetta, Georgia, one of my gold members. Leroy says, I'm using your Tech Help customer database and I'm using the contacts form to track every time I interact with the customer like you recommend. I have specific text that I use a lot, such as sent customer a follow-up email or attempted to contact, no answer, things like that. Is there a way I could just pick these items from a list and then add them to the contact history with a single click instead of having to type them in all the time. I still want the ability to edit the text or add more stuff though. Well, Leroy, Microsoft Word has a feature called auto text where you can program it so that when you type in like a, a short phrase, it'll expand it into a larger block of text. Now, Access doesn't have something like that, but with a tiny little bit of work, we can set up a table that has what I like to call stock replies in it or canned responses, whatever you want to call it. Basically, a list of stuff that you want to pick from to just insert into your correspondence or your, your contact form or whatever. Let me show you what I mean. Now, before we get started, two prerequisites, intro to VBA and DLOOKUP, both free videos. Go watch them. If you've never done any VBA before, don't worry, it's not scary. There will be a couple of lines of code you need for this to work. All right, I, I, I always try to find a non-programming way to make stuff work. And yeah, you can use macros, but I think VBA is easier than macros. I think macros are more complicated than they're worth. So go watch my intro to VBA if you've never done VBA before. It's not hard. And you have to know how to use the DLOOKUP function because we have to look up a value from a table. All right, so go, go watch those, pause this, then come back. All right, okay, here we go. Okay, this is the Tech Help free template that Leroy was talking about. It's a free download from my website. You can go grab a copy if you want to. It's got a basic customer list. You can open up a customer and then click on contacts. And this is meant to be a contact history. If you haven't watched this video, go watch it. I show you how I build this in my, uh, in my blank template video. But basically, you've got the date and time, some basic notes, and then you can put down here in this note area more information about that particular meeting or phone call or whatever you want to put in here. So if you're using this to print out reports, like you have to have detailed customer reports, and you've got certain big blocks of text that you always have to put in there. All right, like attempted to customer or attempted to contact the customer for a follow up, or if you're a doctor, right? Patient was seen in the office today for an evaluation, and you've got specific text you have to have, like for legal purposes or whatever, or just for your own record keeping. Well, you might want to be able to pick from a list that says, "All right, put that in there, put that in there, put that in there." Okay, or even your signature. I use this for correspondence too. You can actually save if you're going to write a letter to the customer, right? Uh, letter uh, about sale. Right, you can come in here and put in the notes field. You know, dear Joe, this is blah 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 blah. Right, sincerely, Richard. And then you can print this out, and and all your correspondence is now saved in your Access database. I actually show how to do this in more detail in my Access Expert Level Five class. You can see kind of same thing right here. Right, you got the the correspondence. You type it in a form. You click a print button, and there it is. All formatted nice and pretty, right? There's your text. You can put your little company logo in there. All right, I'll put a link to this class down below as well. But for now, let's see how I can just put stock text in here. Now, for this example, let's make this form a little bit bigger so we can work with it. All right, let's make this giant like that. I'll move this stuff over here. Okay, get over there. Sit down. All right, we'll take you. We'll make you nice and big. So we got room here for our correspondence. All right, save that. Close it. Let's take a peek. Okay, looks good. So now I want a list of stuff, 
right, that I can choose from and then hit a button and then it goes over into here. All right, so where are we going to get this list of stuff from? Let's make a table. All right, come over here, create, table design. I'm going to call this my auto text table. So this will be the auto text ID. That'll be my auto number. Um, auto text description. That'll be a short text item. Just a brief description of what it is. And then auto text, let's call it full. That's going to be long text or a memo field if you have an older version of Access. That's where we're going to put the full paragraph or whatever you want in there. You can have as much stuff as you want in a long text field within reason. There's a limit, but that's a different class. Okay, save this. Auto text T, my auto text table, primary key, yes, my auto number. Again, that's just for access. We don't worry about what auto numbers are. All right, here we go. And you can make this bigger if you want to. So first one, um, how about like uh, attempted follow-up? Okay, attempted to contact the customer for follow-up. All right, then we've got uh, sent welcome package. All right, and then it could be just the same thing, right? Doesn't have to be anything really long and and and, and verbose, right? Patient eval. If you're a doctor, right? Patient was seen in our office today for an evaluation. Blah 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 blah. Whatever you want. Okay. How about a signature line, right? Signature. You can have multiple signature lines too. You can have a professional one, a personal one. Okay, and then in here. Right, I'm going to hit shift up 2 to zoom in. I like working in the zoom window. All right, since all right, I like to go live long and prosper. That's my signature line. Prosper, I can't spell today. Right? Uh, Richard Rust, present CEO. And then whatever. Uh, Amicron at gmail.com. Whatever. All right, there's my signature. Okay, you want to leave more room in there for a, an actual paper signature when you print it out? Okay, fine. Hit OK. So, I got some stuff. Okay, here's my auto text table. Now, let's make a list. Save changes, yes. Let's make a list here. Let's just do a combo box where we can just drop it down and pick. Then we'll make a button where we'll click on it and it'll add it to the end of this thing. Okay, let's make a combo box. Design view. If you've never made a relational combo box, I got a video on that. I'll put it down in the link section. It's basically making a relational combo box is making it so that it gets its values from another table or query. Okay, not the contact F, but it gets it from that auto text T. All right, so go watch that video if you've never done relational combo boxes before. So go here and find that. All right, drop it over here somewhere. Okay, look up the values from a table or query. Auto text T is where we're getting the list of values from. Now, notice, and this is very important, and this is why we have to use the DLOOKUP function. I've got auto text ID, auto text description. Where's my auto text full? All right. You can't put long text inside of a combo box. So to get that text, we're going to have to look up. All right. So bring both of those fields over. Next. What do you want to sort by? Description is fine. Next. All right. That's what it's going to look like when you open up the box. The key column is hidden. Don't worry about that. The actual value in the box is that one, two, three, four. All right. But we're going to hide that. Next. We're going to remember the value for later use or store it somewhere. Well, we're just going to pick the value and then put text over here. So I'm not going to actually store that in the contact table anywhere. All right. So I'm just going to remember it for later use. Next, what label do you want? Doesn't matter. We're going to delete it and then hit finish. All right. Delete that label that comes with it. And yes, it is possible to turn auto labeling off. Another, another student asked me that question recently. I'm going to be making a video on that soon too. Uh, move that over here. That's just the hidden customer ID. All right, so here's our stock reply combo box. All right, let's save this, close it, open it back up again, and I got mail. All right, drop this down, and you can see now there's my list of auto text. So I'm going to click on one of these. Now, I don't just want it to instantly go over there. I'm going to make a little button right here to do the D lookup, find out what the text is, drop it at the end of this. Okay, all right, you ready? Here we go. Here comes the VBA part. Grab a button. Drop it there. Cancel the wizard. All right. I'm going to recaption this. I'm going to put like uh, two of those and then uh, add auto text like that. All right. Just like so. Okay. Now, what goes in that button? 
All right, right click, build event. Now, for me, it opens up the VB editor. For you, it might ask you what kind of builder do you want. Pick the code builder. That's an option that I turn off. I'll show you how in that video. Okay, so now we're inside the command button. Now, yeah, it's command 10 click. You know what? Let's do this right. Alex yells at me if I don't do this right. I forgot to name my button. Let's go back. All right. Usually, you want to make sure all your objects have good names. Double click on that button. From command 10, make this add auto text uh, button, BTN, or whatever. Whatever you want to call it. Now, when I add code to it, build event, I can see I'm in the add auto text button. Okay, fine. Alex is right. I'm just fighting it. I've been, I've been not naming my command buttons for 20 years. Okay, so now I know what the ID is that the user picked. Okay, and in fact, I might want to first say, if is null, what's the name of that? Oh, we didn't name the combo box either, did we? Let's go back over here. I'm skipping stuff left and right. Open up that combo box. It's combo eight. We don't want combo eight. Auto text combo. Give it a name. All right. So if is null auto text combo, then message box, pick something first or pick some auto text or whatever you want to say. All right. And if come back over here, let's test this so far. See what we got. All right. So if I just open this up and I hit this, boom, it's null. Pick something first. You could even be nice if you want and automatically drop that box down for them. Let's do that. This is, this is, these are the little extra tips, by the way, that I usually include in the extended cut for the members, this little extra stuff, but I'm feeling, I'm feeling generous today. Let's, let's just have some fun. All right. So instead of just pick something first, let's do this. Let's say auto text combo dot set focus. You have to move to that box. Okay. Move the, move the focus, move where the cursor is to that box and then say auto text combo dot drop down. Open that box up for the user. Okay. Save it. So now if I hit the button with nothing in there, boop, it opens it up for me. Isn't that nice? You got to pick something. Okay. And if, and if that's the case, we're also going to say exit sub. So get out of Dodge. All right. The user didn't pick anything. Boop, do that. If you want to give them the message too, that's fine. You could, if you want to be, you know, if, you, if you're building your database for people who aren't computer experts, then every office has them. All right, you got the secretary at the front desk that doesn't know much about using computers. Actually, sec in my experience, secretaries usually do. You know who doesn't? It's the guy, if you're in a business that's not computer related, like plumbing or carpentry or whatever, it's the guys in the back actually doing the work, the hard work for the business that have to log stuff in. They don't know computers. The, the office staff usually does. <laughs> the secretaries and the, the executives and the administrators. Anyways, okay. I See, I rant on like this sometimes. I've had too much coffee today. Um, anyways, message box. Pick a pick auto text first, like that. So now you go boop, pick auto text first, and then it drops the button down, the box down for you. Okay, now what do we actually do once the user picks something? Well, we're gonna de look up what that is in the table and drop that into here. Okay. So we're gonna store that temporarily in a variable called s. Dim s as a string. Why s? Because it's a string. Then we're gonna say s equals here comes the D lookup D lookup what are we looking up auto text full where are we getting it from auto text T what's the criteria auto text ID equals close the string up auto text combo just like that now if we get to this point we're guaranteed to have a value in that combo box because we check for it up here so they can't we don't have to use the if we if we weren't sure we could wrap that inside of the NZ function but we don't have to worry about that at this point because when we get down to here, we're sure that there's a value in there. So now I'm going to take whatever I looked up from that table and add it to the end of S or, or of notes. I'm going to add S to the end of notes. This box here is called notes. Let me show you. See, that's the name of that one, notes. Okay, so come back in here. All right, now for now, just let's just test it. I'm going to say notes equals S. All right, just take whatever I looked up, put it in notes. All right, save it. Let's come back out here and try it. Pick something and hit add auto text. Boom, see that? All right, I looked up the value using this ID from this table and brought it back here. Let's do signature. Boom, see that? Okay, but now I'm setting this whole thing equal to whatever I pulled up. Let's add it on the end. So I'm gonna say notes equals notes and S like that. 
All right, add it on the end of it. So now if I pick something else, if I pick, well, let's get rid of the signature first. Let's pick um, patient eval and then signature. Okay, okay, we're getting there. But now I want to make sure I've got two enters there, two line enters. All right, now in VB, that's a VB new line character. So here I'm going to say notes equals notes and VB new line and VB new line. It's like you hit the enter key twice and S. All right, so put the notes and then two blanks and then an S in there. All right, so let me re let me clear this again. Try it one more time. Okay, here we go. Let's do patient eval. Okay, there's that, and then let's add the signature. Okay, looks good. But maybe before that first one, I don't want the two blank lines in there, right? Maybe if this is already blank, then just put the patient eval in there. Don't don't start it off with two blank lines. All right, how do we do that? Well, I'll just check to see if notes is null. If is null, notes, then notes equals s. All right, if it's already blank, just put s in there. Otherwise, that means there's something in there. Do that. Right? Put notes equals notes and that and then s. All right, save it. Come on back here. I'm going to clear this. Let's uh let's close it. I like to close my form once in a while just to make sure it's working. All right? It saves everything nicely. All right, here we go. All right, let's start off with the patient eval. Nice. And then we'll add the signature. Beautiful. And there you go. That's all you got to do. Go to another one, right? Go to a new record here. Um, and you could even do something where if you want to, whatever you pick from here can go up here too. Like let's say you want the default description to also be, you know, the first thing that was picked from this list. Like attempted follow-up, hit it. Right? Let's do that. What is that called up top? This is description. All right, so we'll do this. And we'll say right here, if is null description, then uh, description equals. Now, that's stored in the combo box. So we can say auto text combo dot column one. We don't have to de-look up that. All right, so if the description is null and only if it's null, Set the description equal to whatever I picked in that combo box. So you'll get the first thing you pick. That should make data entry a little bit faster. All right, so if I come in here, if I go to a new record, and I pick this, I say sent welcome package, and then hit add, and then we're done. See? But if it's something a little more complex, and if I pick a second one, if I pick a signature after that, it doesn't change the description. But if I come over here and pick something a little more detailed, like uh, patient evaluation, click, right? Patient eval goes up here. The description goes down there. And then you want to add something else. There you go. Sweet, ain't it? See, I'm telling you, it's a couple of lines of code. How many, what's the total lines of code we have? We really, okay, we didn't really need that. We don't really need that. All right. And literally we could do it with one, two lines of code. Three, if you don't mind the, if you want the extra little stuff in there. It's not hard, folks. That's why I say learn VB. VB and SQL. If you really want to learn like, take your access databases to the next level, learn VB and SQL. And I got classes for both of those things. I'll put links down below. How do you become a member? Click the Join button below the video. After you click the Join button, you'll see a list of all the different types of membership levels that are available. Silver members and up will get access to all of the extended cut tech help videos, live video and chat sessions, and more. Gold members get access to a download folder containing all the sample databases that I build in my Tech Help videos, plus my Code Vault, where I keep tons of different functions that I use. Platinum members get all the previous perks, plus access to my full beginner courses and some of my expert courses. These are the full-length courses found on my website, and not just for access. I also teach Word, Excel, Visual Basic, ASP, and lots more. But don't worry, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and feel free to post any comments that you have. I do read them all. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free, and click the bell icon and select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Click on the show more link below the video to find additional resources and links. You'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted, so if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video,
click on the link to join my mailing list. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of building databases with Access. It's over three hours long. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. And if you like Level 1, Level 2 is just $1. And it's also free for all members of my YouTube channel at any level. Want to have your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my Tech Help page and you can send me your question there. Click here to watch my free Access Beginner Level 1 course, more of my Tech Help videos, or to subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching this video from AccessLearningZone.com.